The Concerning Truth About Antibiotics Antibiotics play a pivotal role in modern healthcare, representing one of the most significant medical advancements of the 20th century. These powerful medications have revolutionized the Antibiotics play a pivotal role in modern healthcare, representing one of the most significant medical advancements of the 20th century. These powerful medications have revolutionized the treatment of bacterial infections, saving countless lives and alleviating suffering. Antibiotics work by inhibiting the growth and reproduction of harmful bacteria or by directly killing them, effectively eradicating infections and preventing their spread. From common ailments like urinary tract infections and strep throat to more severe conditions such as pneumonia and sepsis, antibiotics provide a critical line of defense. They are indispensable in surgical procedures, as they prevent infections that can complicate recovery and compromise patient outcomes. However, it is crucial to use antibiotics judiciously to avoid the emergence of antibiotic-resistant bacteria, emphasizing the significance of responsible prescribing practices and public awareness campaigns. Here's a list of the most concerning truths about our antibiotic use. Antibiotics disrupt the gut microbiota. Antibiotics, while effective at treating bacterial infections, can also have unintended consequences on the delicate balance of the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome is a complex ecosystem of trillions of microorganisms that reside in the gastrointestinal tract and play a vital role in digestion, nutrient absorption, and immune function. Unfortunately, antibiotics are not selective in their action, and they can disrupt this intricate microbial community by killing not only the harmful bacteria causing the infection but also beneficial bacteria. This disruption can lead to an imbalance in the gut microbiome, known as dysbiosis, which can have various and negative effects. It can result in gastrointestinal disturbances, such as diarrhea or constipation, as well as increase the risk of developing antibiotic-associated infections like Clostridium difficile, C. diff. Dizziness is a common side effect. Some people may experience feelings of lightheadedness, unsteadiness, or a spinning sensation during antibiotic treatment. The precise mechanisms behind antibiotic-induced dizziness are not fully understood, but it is believed to be related to the impact of antibiotics on the central nervous system or inner ear. Some antibiotics, particularly those from the aminoglycoside or fluoroquinolone classes, have been associated with a higher risk of dizziness. Individual susceptibility, interactions with other medications, or underlying health conditions may contribute to the occurrence of dizziness. Some antibiotics can reduce the effectiveness of birth control pills. Some antibiotics, specifically rifampin and rifibutin, are known to accelerate the breakdown of hormones in the body. This can reduce the concentration of hormones in the bloodstream, potentially making hormonal contraceptives less effective. However, it is important to note that the majority of antibiotics do not have a significant impact on birth control. There is limited evidence to suggest that other antibiotics, such as penicillin, amoxicillin, and tetracycline, may interfere with the effectiveness of birth control pills, but the extent of this interaction is still debated among experts. To ensure reliable contraception, individuals using hormonal birth control should consult their healthcare provider or pharmacist about potential interactions between antibiotics and their specific contraceptive method. Antibiotics can cause photosensitivity. Antibiotics, particularly certain classes such as tetracyclines and fluoroquinolones, can increase the skin's sensitivity to sunlight, a condition known as photosensitivity. When exposed to sunlight or ultraviolet UV, radiation, patients taking these antibiotics may experience adverse reactions on their skin, ranging from mild sunburn-like symptoms to more severe blistering and skin rashes. Photosensitivity occurs due to the chemical structure of these antibiotics which can react with UV light and generate reactive oxygen species that damage the skin cells. It is important to note that not everyone who takes these antibiotics will experience photosensitivity, and the degree of sensitivity can vary among people. To minimize the risk, those taking photosensitizing antibiotics are advised to take precautions such as avoiding prolonged sun exposure, wearing protective clothing, and using broad-spectrum sunscreen with a high sun protection factor, SPF. 
their use can create secondary infections. While antibiotics are used to treat bacterial infections, they can occasionally lead to secondary infections. Antibiotics, by their nature, target bacteria, and in the process, they can disrupt the natural balance of microorganisms in the body. This disruption can create an opportunity for other opportunistic pathogens, such as fungi or resistant bacteria, to overgrow and cause new infections. For example, the prolonged use of broad-spectrum antibiotics can suppress the growth of beneficial bacteria that normally keep fungal populations in check, potentially leading to conditions like oral thrush or vaginal yeast infections. Additionally, antibiotic use can also contribute to the emergence of antibiotic-resistant bacteria, which can cause severe and difficult-to-treat infections. Agricultural use of antibiotics leads to resistance. The agricultural use of antibiotics has been identified as a significant contributor to the development and spread of antibiotic resistance. In many countries, antibiotics are commonly used in livestock farming to promote growth and prevent disease outbreaks in crowded and unsanitary conditions. However, the widespread and often indiscriminate use of antibiotics in agriculture provides ample opportunities for bacteria to evolve and develop resistance mechanisms. Resistant bacteria can spread from animals to humans through direct contact, consumption of contaminated food products, or exposure to contaminated environments. Moreover, antibiotic-resistant genes can be transferred between different bacterial species, further fueling the emergence of multidrug-resistant pathogens. This poses a serious public health concern as these resistant bacteria can cause infections that are difficult, if not impossible, to treat with standard antibiotics. Beta blockers and antibiotics don't mix. Antibiotics can interact with beta blockers, a class of medications commonly prescribed for conditions such as high blood pressure, heart disease, and certain types of migraines. Some antibiotics can potentially enhance the effects of beta blockers, leading to an excessive decrease in heart rate and blood pressure. This interaction occurs because both antibiotics and beta blockers can affect the sympathetic nervous system which regulates heart rate and blood pressure. The combination of these medications can intensify the heart rate and blood pressure lowering effects, potentially causing dizziness, lightheadedness, fainting, or even a dangerously slow heart rate. They won't treat all bacterial infections. Antibiotics are not always the appropriate treatment for conditions such as bronchitis, ear infections, or sinus infections. These infections can have different causes, including viruses, which antibiotics are ineffective against. In the case of bronchitis, most instances are caused by viruses and typically resolve on their own with time and supportive care, such as rest, fluids, and over-the-counter medications to alleviate symptoms. Ear infections, particularly in children, are often caused by viruses as well, and many cases improve without antibiotics. Sinus infections, also known as sinusitis, can be caused by viruses, bacteria, or even allergies. In many cases, viral sinus infections will resolve on their own, while bacterial sinus infections may require antibiotics. However, healthcare providers typically rely on specific criteria, such as the severity and duration of symptoms, to determine if antibiotics are necessary. Expired antibiotics pose dangerous risks. Using expired antibiotics can be dangerous and should be avoided. Antibiotics have an expiration date for a reason, as they can degrade over time, potentially leading to a loss of potency and effectiveness. The chemical composition of antibiotics can change as they age, rendering them less capable of killing or inhibiting bacterial growth. This can result in inadequate treatment of infections, allowing bacteria to persist and potentially develop resistance. Additionally, Expired antibiotics may also break down into harmful byproducts that could potentially cause adverse effects or toxic reactions when ingested. It is crucial to adhere to the expiration dates on medication labels and properly dispose of expired antibiotics. You may require combination therapy for some infections. Combination therapy, the use of multiple antibiotics to treat an infection, is often necessary and beneficial in certain situations. There are several reasons why combination therapy may be preferred over a single antibiotic. Firstly, 
Some infections can be caused by multiple bacterial species or strains, making it essential to target all the involved pathogens simultaneously. Combination therapy can provide broader coverage, increasing the likelihood of successful treatment. Additionally, some bacteria have developed resistance mechanisms against specific antibiotics, making them ineffective when used alone. By combining antibiotics with different mechanisms of action, it becomes more challenging for bacteria to develop resistance and increases the chances of effectively eliminating the infection. It's becoming increasingly difficult to find new drugs. The discovery and development of new antibiotics to combat treatment-resistant bacteria is an arduous and challenging task. Over time, bacteria have evolved various mechanisms to resist the effects of existing antibiotics, rendering many of these drugs ineffective. The process of finding new antibiotics involves extensive research, testing, and clinical trials, which can be time-consuming and costly. Furthermore, the traditional methods of screening for new antibiotics from natural sources have become less fruitful as most easily accessible sources have already been extensively explored. In addition, pharmaceutical companies have shifted their focus towards more profitable therapeutic areas, resulting in a decline in antibiotic research and development. Antibiotics do not work on viruses. It is important to recognize that antibiotics are ineffective in treating viral infections. Antibiotics specifically target and kill bacteria or inhibit their growth, but they have no impact on viruses. Viral infections, such as the common cold, influenza, or viral gastroenteritis, are caused by viruses that are fundamentally different from bacteria. Antibiotics work by disrupting bacterial processes or structures that are absent in viruses. Using antibiotics to treat viral infections not only proves ineffective but also contributes to the growing problem of antibiotic resistance. To address viral infections, antiviral medications or supportive treatments that alleviate symptoms and boost the body's immune response may be recommended. It's important to complete the entire course of antibiotics prescribed. Taking the full course of antibiotics as prescribed by a healthcare professional is crucial for effective treatment and preventing the development of antibiotic resistance. Antibiotics are prescribed for a specific duration based on scientific evidence and clinical experience, taking into account the necessary time required to eliminate the infection-causing bacteria. Stopping the antibiotics prematurely, even if symptoms have improved, can leave behind small populations of bacteria that may have survived or developed resistance to the medication. These remaining bacteria can multiply, potentially leading to a relapse or the spread of resistant strains. By completing the full course of antibiotics, the medication can eliminate the infection entirely and reduce the likelihood of recurrence. Patients can carry bacteria resistant to an antibiotic for 12 months. After receiving antibiotic treatment, patients can carry bacteria that are resistant to the specific antibiotic used for a considerable period, up to 12 months or even longer. Some bacteria possess resistance genes that enable them to survive and multiply despite the presence of antibiotics. These resistant bacteria can reside in various sites within the body, including the gut, respiratory tract, or skin. The prolonged presence of antibiotics in the body can provide a selective pressure favoring the growth of resistant strains. Antibiotic use can disrupt the normal balance of bacteria in the body, allowing resistant bacteria to flourish. Antibiotics can cause tendinitis and tendon rupture. Tendons, which connect muscles to bones, can become weakened and susceptible to injury when exposed to certain antibiotics. The exact mechanisms behind this risk are not fully understood, but it is believed to involve the disruption of collagen synthesis and structural changes in tendons. Tendinitis, characterized by inflammation of the tendon, can lead to pain, swelling, and difficulty in movement. In some cases, the tendon can even rupture, causing significant pain and impairment. Individuals taking fluoroquinolones or other antibiotics associated with tendon-related side effects should be cautious and promptly report any tendon pain, swelling, or signs of rupture to their healthcare provider. They can cause diarrhea and nausea. One of the common side effects associated with antibiotic use is the potential to cause nausea and diarrhea. 
Antibiotics, while effective in targeting harmful bacteria, can also affect the balance of the beneficial bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. This disruption can lead to an overgrowth of certain types of bacteria, such as Clostridium difficile, which can cause diarrhea. Antibiotics can irritate the lining of the stomach and intestines, leading to gastrointestinal distress and nausea. The severity of these side effects can vary depending on the specific antibiotic, the person's sensitivity, and the duration of treatment. Some people have a life-threatening allergy to antibiotics. Deadly allergies to antibiotics, although rare, can have severe and potentially life-threatening consequences. An allergic reaction occurs when the immune system overreacts to the presence of the antibiotic, considering it a threat. The most severe allergic reaction to antibiotics is called anaphylaxis, which can cause a sudden drop in blood pressure, difficulty breathing, swelling of the throat, and hives. If not promptly treated, anaphylaxis can be fatal. Penicillin and related antibiotics, such as amoxicillin, are the most commonly associated with severe allergic reactions. However, allergies can also develop to other classes of antibiotics, including cephalosporins, sulfonamides, and fluoroquinolones. It is crucial for patients with known antibiotic allergies to communicate this information to their doctors and wear medical alert identification. Antibiotics can affect the efficacy of chemotherapy. Certain antibiotics, such as tetracyclines and fluoroquinolones, have been found to interfere with the effectiveness of specific chemotherapy drugs. This interference occurs because antibiotics can inhibit the activity of enzymes responsible for activating the chemotherapy agents, potentially reducing their therapeutic effects. The inhibition of these enzymes can lead to a decreased activation of chemotherapy drugs, which may result in diminished cancer-fighting capabilities. It is essential for healthcare providers to be aware of these potential interactions and carefully select antibiotic and chemotherapy combinations to ensure the best possible treatment outcomes for patients undergoing chemotherapy. Reactions from antibiotics cause one out of five medication-related pediatric visits to the ER. Antibiotic reactions account for approximately 20% of medication-related visits to the emergency department, making them a significant concern. Among children, reactions to antibiotics are the leading cause of medication-related emergency department visits. This highlights the importance of monitoring and addressing potential adverse reactions to antibiotics, particularly in pediatric populations, to ensure patient safety and appropriate management of antibiotic-related emergencies. Antibiotics may cause fatigue. While not everyone experiences fatigue when taking antibiotics, it can occur in some people. The exact mechanism by which antibiotics cause fatigue is not fully understood, but it is believed to be related to the impact on the body's natural microbiota and the disruption of normal physiological processes. Since antibiotics impact gut health, it is possible that some vitamins and minerals needed for energy may become depleted during antibiotic treatment. It is important to note that fatigue during antibiotic treatment is generally temporary and subsides once the course of antibiotics is completed. They can interact with warfarin. Antibiotics can interact with warfarin, a commonly prescribed blood-thinning medication. Warfarin works by inhibiting the body's ability to clot, reducing the risk of blood clots. However, certain antibiotics can interfere with the metabolism of warfarin, leading to changes in its effectiveness and potentially increasing the risk of bleeding or clotting. Some antibiotics can affect the activity of enzymes responsible for metabolizing warfarin in the liver, either by inhibiting their activity or inducing them to work more rapidly. This can result in fluctuations in the levels of warfarin in the blood, requiring careful monitoring and potential adjustment of the warfarin dosage. Avoiding alcohol while taking antibiotics is important. It is generally advised to avoid consuming alcohol while taking antibiotics. Alcohol can interfere with the effectiveness and safety of certain antibiotics. When alcohol and antibiotics are combined, they can both put additional strain on the liver, which is responsible for metabolizing both substances. This can potentially decrease the liver's ability to process the antibiotic effectively, leading to reduced efficacy of the medication. Moreover, some antibiotics, such as metronidazole and tinidazole, 
can cause a severe reaction when mixed with alcohol, resulting in symptoms like nausea, vomiting, flushing, rapid heartbeat, and in some cases, even a risk of fainting. Even antibiotics that do not have a specific alcohol interaction warning can still cause side effects such as dizziness, drowsiness, or upset stomach, which can be worsened when alcohol is consumed concurrently. Tetracyclines must be avoided during pregnancy. Tetracyclines, a class of antibiotics that includes medications like doxycycline and tetracycline, are generally considered unsafe to take during pregnancy. These antibiotics can cross the placenta and reach the developing fetus, potentially causing harm. Tetracyclines can interfere with the development of the fetal skeletal system and teeth, leading to permanent discoloration and malformation of the baby's teeth and bones. Additionally, tetracyclines can also affect the liver of the developing fetus. Due to these potential risks, tetracyclines are typically avoided during pregnancy, particularly during the second half when fetal bone and tooth development are more active. There is a link between antibiotics and mental health issues. Some studies have found associations between antibiotic use and an increased risk of conditions such as depression, anxiety, and even autism spectrum disorders. However, the exact mechanisms and extent of this relationship are still being explored, and more research is needed to better understand the complex interplay between antibiotics, the gut microbiota, and mental health. It is important for healthcare providers to consider these potential effects when prescribing antibiotics and to monitor patients for any changes in mental health during and after antibiotic treatment. Antibiotics and NSAIDs don't always work well together. Antibiotics can interact with nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, which are commonly used to relieve pain, reduce inflammation, and lower fever. The interaction between antibiotics and NSAIDs can occur due to their shared effects on certain enzymes in the body. NSAIDs inhibit the activity of an enzyme called cyclooxygenase, COX, which is responsible for producing inflammatory substances called prostaglandins. Some antibiotics, particularly those from the fluoroquinolone class, can also inhibit the activity of COX enzymes, resulting in a potential additive or synergistic effect when combined with NSAIDs. This interaction can increase the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding or ulceration, as both antibiotics and NSAIDs can irritate the lining of the stomach and intestines.